Welcome to another Melbourne Cocoa Heads presentation. This month, Chris Miles talks about developing augmented reality applications for iOS. Okay, so thanks for coming. Um, so I'm going to talk about augmented reality, particularly with iOS, um, as, as it says. Um, for those, I'm sure many of you already know about the sort of augmented reality, reality technology, but for those who aren't familiar with the term, it's really all about um, live, you know, live video input, reality, and you're extending that by superimposing or by um, rendering graphics on top of that, but merging those graphics into the live scene. So some, some real world examples, you've seen this with sports. Um, for many years now, so that's um, swimming at the Olympics, and the green line that kind of moves along with the swimmer. The guys sitting in the in the stands don't see this line somehow magically in the pool, but through the through the live broadcast, they're 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 adding that on top, and, and it looks quite cool, and it's useful for the for the viewer to see where the world record is and that sort of thing. Um, in American IndyCar, and the same with NASCAR, you'll see as they race around the track. Sometimes during the broadcast, they'll pop up these little sort of call-out views effectively, with arrows pointing to the cars, and as the camera wobbles and the cars are moving about, the, um, the arrow tracks the car accurately. It looks quite good, and it's really useful for the viewers to see which car's which. Sometimes there's multiple cars, and they'll have a couple of them down, so you can see who's racing who. So this sort of stuff's been around for a while, and these days we get to implement that sort of things in our, you know, in our mobile apps, because the devices are getting powerful enough to do this kind of thing. So in terms of mobile devices, um, one project I recently finished, and it's now out in the, in the wild, is this um, promotional app that Sega have put out for, for um, Sonic's 20th anniversary and the new game um, Sonic Generations. Um, th this app gives you the ability to, to see the, the world of Sonic. Little did we know that Sonic's running around us all the time. He's too fast to see. But through the magic of, of iPhone and, and this clever software, we can slow him down and actually catch him as he flies past and, and you know, catch that glimpse, maybe even take a snapshot of him. So this app gives us the ability to do some clever things like that. So what I'll do is just um, pass, a, uh, pass something to my assistant and bring up the app for us to have a quick look at. So what, uh, what, what Sega and the agency have done is has created a bunch of um, what they've done is create a bunch of posters and different images um, related to their promotion and put them around you know around the country in in shopping centers in um, in print um, blogs and uh, I think television as well um, and if you find one of those you get to you get to grab the app um, and bring it up to, to try and catch Sonic for yourself so um, shopping to, there's a location so there's a map that tells you where all the, the fixed posters are in different shopping centers around. Uh, you find one of those, uh, we bring up the, the view, which gives us the camera view, and then we point it, just bring it slightly bit closer, but that's not too bad, and just angle it that way because there's a bit of reflection. Now, these things work really well, but you know, you, you've got to give them, got to give them a bit of help. So when it detects one of these markers, we get this sonic ring spinning around, and if you watch carefully and we wait, we see sonic fly by. <laughs> just catch that glimpse. <laughs> so, so what we want to do, just tilt it this way, sign a bit. Oh, let me grab it. So what, with, with, with this, that's right, with this augmented reality, you can really, the reflections kind of mess about with it in different lighting, but we're getting it, we're getting it pretty, pretty reasonable here. So you can sort of really tilt it. Oh, there he was again. You really tilt it round. Hang on a sec. You can really tilt it on different angles um, and see if we, careful enough, we can see him running in from a distance and that sort of thing. So, you know, the aim of the app is really to try and catch him as he runs past the scene. Hold that and I'll see if I can get him. We'll give it one go. I should be good at this. Oh, well, let's see. <laughs> one, one last go and then I won't bore you anymore. I should be good at this because I've done this about a million times now. So he's running in. We get this little targeting system to tell us he's about to appear. And I'll sort of, oh, there we go. Catch, caught his foot. So, you know, we almost had him. We almost got him. So uh, that's a novelty bit. These guys are using, um, hold up. They're using augmented reality to you know, give a sort of a novel view, a, a bit of a, a gimmick into the world of, of Sonic there. So what I'll, um, what I'll start by doing now is just quickly tell you who I am, for those that don't know me. My name's Chris Miles. I'm a freelance software engineer, and um, these days I'm specializing in iOS development, which I've been doing for about, what year, up to sort of, th well, soon after it came out, three years or so now. Um, some of my recent projects for clients are obviously the, the Sonic app for Sega, 
Um, I developed that um, in cooperation with Millipede Creative. Um, we developed that for JW JWT and Sega, obviously. Um, just speaking of Millipede quickly, there are a bunch of cool guys in Richmond. They're actually, they've got some office space. So anyone, in small companies or any individuals looking for some office space in Richmond, I can put you in contact with those guys. Um, if you like an environment that has you know, foosball tables and arcade machines and all that sort of fun stuff, um, they're certainly worth talking to. Um, so that's what I've worked on sort of this year. Uh, I did a product browsing app for Jeans West, which was deployed on iPads in, in stores. I found one just the other week in the new Jeans West store in Melbourne Central. So these iPads are mounted, um, and users can come in and, and shoppers can come in and browse through the products looking for the things that may, may suit their style. Um, I did the app for the government's Swap It, Don't Stop It Health campaign. Um, and I did a, a small app for Fruish, the national foods brand. I actually used the SAPI API on that one so uh, when it was back in private beta. And that, that worked well, so I can recommend that. I built a, um, an XML-driven animation engine for sort of kitty e-books. And this was uh, the first one to come out using that engine for the, my friends at Conduct. Uh, and, that, and that was a good project. Um, and I also did a uh, directory search app for British Telecom in the UK, kind of the equivalent of Yellow Pages. Um, and another company in the UK called Locator who has a full text search engine. I did their port to iOS. Um, so if you want to, basically if you want to embed um, a native full text search engine in your iOS um, app, then these would be the guys to talk to. I can, I can uh, give you an example of that or put you in contact with those guys. All right, enough of that rant. The augmented reality side of things I'll talk about today. I'm going to briefly talk about um, location based augmented reality. So I'm going to sort of separate the the, the genre into a location-based and image-based. Um, with image-based, I'll, I'll go into a, lot more, a bit more detail and tell you about the commercial libraries that I'm familiar with and a few of the open source alternatives. So starting on location-based, um, this sort of augmented reality has been around a, a bit longer. As soon as devices got the, the GPSs and, and, and compasses and accelerometers, then it's really all about um, being able to hold the device up through the camera, we can see objects pr projected in the what, what um, projected through the camera in the in the physical where, where they are located in the physical world. So it's a lot easier to demonstrate than to talk about. I've thrown together this this simple demo, um, which is basically um, let's say we're walking down the street and we want to find the you know some coffee shops that are that, that are near us. So you know instead of using Google Maps or maybe using our, our eyes. Hello. We, um, we bring up our special coffee augmented reality finding app and we look around and besides compass directions, we see if we can see any, any coffee shops. There's not many loaded in in this location. Oh, there's one, but there's, you know, there's one over sort of southeast or whatever that is over there. Um, as part of the sort of demonstrations, little prototype app, we can go into a little map editor. And so we throw a couple over here and let's where are we? throw one over here. So this just lets us put some, you know, ideally if this was a real app, we'd be grabbing it from some web service. Um, well, perhaps, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's some co two coffee shops over there. And maybe if it were, oh, that's getting funky. Maybe if, there, if it were a real app, it would show some, you know, ratings about the, about the, the stores and so on. So that's, you know, that's as simple as location-based gets anyway. We're really using the um, sensors in the phone to determine where the user is in the real, where, where they're located in the real world, um, and which way the device is pointing to superimpose some information for the for the user to help them orient themselves and, and find different things. So location-based they are basically you know you, as I said it's using the GPS compass and accelerometer to um, position the device in the real world um, and, and work out its its orientation and then project interesting. Um, objects that are physically located around you um, through the camera so you can kind of get a better relative um, view of where, where they're located. Um, it, this sort of, this sort of um, AR doesn't normally do image processing so you could really sort of switch the camera off and you'd still see the objects projected on the screen. Uh, obviously it's a lot more useful with the camera so that you get the, the relative um, positioning. But um, but yeah, so, so, so this sort of thing is a, is a lot easier to do in terms of you don't really need a commercial library to do this. There are some like um, Layer, um, and there are a couple of other ones that I'll, that I'll talk about a little bit later as, as part of the other demonstrations. 
but it's the sort of thing where you can, you know, it, Cocoa Touch provides all the APIs for getting the sensor information, so it's really about mapping physical objects um, through that onto the screen. There's some code, like the demonstration little app I showed you then, most of that code was from, a, there's a book called, I think it's iPhone 3D Programming, or one of those books that basically give you a working example that's very similar to that, and I kind of just modified what they gave you. So all the code's out there to do at least the simple stuff. So what I'll mainly talk about today is, uh, is image-based AR. So this is where you know, the camera input has to be processed in real time to look for predefined markers in the scene. Markers are you know, just different types of images. It looks for those markers and it also determines when it finds them what th three-dimensional orientation they're in so that the app can then draw things or render things on top of them or relative to those markers. So the, the Sega one was obviously an example of that. Um, so what I'll do is just run through some of the commercial libraries that are available to do that starting with the string library. Um, what do we got? So let me throw a uh, marker at the assistant. Oh, let me just hold it up first. So this, this, is, this is basically, what I'll show you is the demonstration app that comes with the, that, that string give you for free. You, you download the demo app with a, with a sort of demo license. Um, you use one of these markers. This is one of the example ones. Um, and then you, you, you'll see what we see in a sec. So we point at, you know, pointing at the marker and we get, hold it slightly closer just to make it easier or make it less funny. So we get a you know, 3D cube and we can you know, orient ourselves around that. The, the reflection that's coming in I think is, is causing a bit of flickering, but it can be a lot better. So we can go right on some angles, well, usually too much, um, too much lighting. So obviously the, it's sensitive depending on the lighting and the things that are interrupting the image. Some libraries are better than others. But you can go right, right on some angles in some cases and, and you know, rotate around the, the cube. So these guys give you a working demo with something as simple as a cube that you then, then go in and replace that code with whatever you really want to render on top of that. So to find string, you look at poweredbystring.com. It's a commercial library and they distribute it as a static library. Um, it comes with a really simple, fairly cl real, well, really clean Objective-C API, so it's designed for iOS. Um, the API is nice and simple, easy to get going. The demo app basically sets it all up for you anyway, so you just go in there um, and start modifying it to render your own things instead of the little cube. Um, string basically requires that your markers um, are, sort of, are basically rectangular with um, high contrast borders. So with this example, We've got, this is the ideal case where you, it's really you know, black, dark black rectangular bordered um, in, with a white paper, white background. So there's a high contrast, so it, it's efficient to find the, you know, sort of, you can imagine it will do edge detection first to find the rectangle in space and then it does um, image processing to determine if it matches what, what it's supposed to look for. So that's the ideal case. You can get away with not necessarily having black rectangles as, as long as you've still got the um, high contrast, so they, some of the Sonic ones, for example, uh, they, they're grading, graduated dark to the edges and it's still not black bordered, but it's you know, dark bordered with a high contrast white behind it, so you know, String's still happy with that. So String's designed for, well, basically designed for OpenGL, OpenGL ES rendering, so the demo app that you get, it is set up as an OpenGL ES program. It renders the 3D cube using OpenGL ES, so you'd, if you're already familiar with that, what you see with the demo app is, is completely familiar to, to, to anyone who does that day to day. You just replace the cube rendering code with something a lot more interesting. So that works well. If you want to do it with UIKit or even core animation, it's, it's a lot harder, if not very difficult to do, as um, I found out when I helped someone try and do that. Um, and to make it easy, what, what they basically do is give you, so it's, as I said, it's designed for OpenGL ES rendering, so basically those familiar with it, you normally have, you know, set up a render loop and then each time the, the, the render loop needs to be, each um, frame update, your render loop's called to do your drawing. So you just, um, you delegate the, the timing to a string, it basically syncs that timing to the camera input for every camera frame, it grabs the frame, analyzes it for what it needs to do to detect markers, it draws the camera frame to the view and then calls your render function. And you, then you're basically in a, a normal OpenGLES program. The only difference is you can ask String, have you detected any markers, this render frame, what are their, um, and you can ask it for its, their transform matrices or their quaternions, depending on what you need to use to then do your rendering appropriately. Some of the other functions that they offer, um, scene snapshotting, so you can ask 
string to just give you a snapshot image of, of what, the, what the user's seeing, including the camera image. Um, it, can, it can detect multiple markers at once in terms of you can load in different multiple images and it det can detect any of them and tell you which one it's found. And it can also detect multiple images in the scene at the same time and tell you about all of them. It, an advanced feature is live color sampling where it, it basically is giving you kind of like a white balance of, of the input that it's seeing. So you can adjust the tint of your drawing to kind of match, get a bit more of a, a color or a tint match. Um, and it comes with a, a Unity Coco Touch Hook as well for the guys that like that. The limited, or the demo, um, the demo app that you get for free comes with a limited demo license that basically lets you do what I showed with the little cube, cube app. So you can basically build an, an, an image-based AR using that. You, you're limited in terms of you can only take one marker, um, one marker image, um, and it doesn't have things like a, the color sampling and that sort of stuff. If you want the more advanced features, you can grab a dev license for about 100 bucks. And then if you want to distribute an app, you pay some, anywhere between sort of 500 and seven grand, depending on, really depending on how much string branding you want to not have in the app. So at the high end, if you don't want any string branding at all, you, you pay the big bucks. I'm not going to show much code today. Basically, this is it. And it's not important if you can't see the details here. But basically, this is the code effectively straight from the demo app. This is the OpenGL ES render loop, or the, the render function that, that will be called every frame. Um, basically, 95% of this is standard OpenGL ES code for anyone who already does that. You can, you'll be hard pressed to pick out anything different. It's just drawing, doing some drawing. The only line that's really string based is this one where it's a call into string just to ask it for the marker information and, and the transform matrices for each of the markers that, that are detected in that frame. So nice and easy to work with this one. Move on to another library, this one by Meta.io called, called the Unify SDK. They've got a demo that looks like this, or well, their marker looks like this. So we'll throw that up with our lovely assistant and I'll fetch the, uh, the demo. These guys, their library actually supports location-based AR as well. So if you don't want to write your own um, code to, to read the sensors and to map things, you can, um, you can just grab this library to do that for you. Um, but we'll just look at the image stuff today because the location stuff is similar to what we already looked at. So their demo um, basically is all about drawing this little guy above the, the image of him. Um, we should be able to move around him as well, if lighting's good to us. So he's standing there, we can kind of use our finger to move him around a bit, just interact a little, um, and, and tap him to, to do things. So the, the first, first obvious difference with this one is the marker image doesn't, well, isn't rectangular with, the, with sharp contrast borders, so they're a bit more flexible in terms of the images that they'll detect. The, um, you know, the frame rate and everything's still really good, so it does, does a good job in detection. Um, the other thing I like is that you can really kind of crop in on an area of the of the image, and it'll still it'll still detect where you are, and well, obviously which image it is, and where you are in the image. So that sort of feature can be handy as well, depending on what you're doing. Um, strings a bit more sensitive. You really need the whole image to be in the in the camera view, not cropped, for it to do its job properly. So that's basically that one. So Unify, yeah, commercial library, again, it's distributed as a static library, as you'd expect. It is multi-platform, so they support iOS, Android, Windows Mobile, and Symbian. Um, they provide it as a C++ API for interfacing with that. The API is a lot more extensive, I guess. There's a lot more work to do for the iOS developer to get this one going. Although, obviously, the, the demo app kind of gets you started, but uh, modifications take a bit more work. For example, the, to configure all the markers, that you need to detect, it's all XML driven. So you have to kind of edit a bunch of XML to tell it what markers, details about them and what, what you want to happen when they're detected. Um, similar with camera calibration. I think because this is cross, sort of cross-platform, there, and there's so many different devices available, you have to tell it what, what the characteristics of the camera and the particular devices you want to support are. Well, so all the common ones are there out of the box, especially the iPhones you'd imagine. But if you've got some, um, probably some Android devices with some less common that are less common, then you might have to configure the calibration for that. Um, one thing that put me off a little bit is that the 3D rendering and animation is, is controlled by the library itself. It has its own higher level API to do all the 3D drawing. So you give it your objects you want drawn and kind of configure what you want to happen when, when events happen, like touch and that sort of thing. And it handles that for you. 
that could be useful to some people who don't want to do their own drawing. So that could be an advantage to look at. Um, but when you want full control, then it, then it could perhaps get in the way, depending what you actually want to do in the end. Uh, Unify, they support encrypting the AR config and the model data, if that's useful to you. As I showed you or said, they had location-based AR in their library as well. And the eval, the demo that comes with the eval license, basically doesn't allow you to modify the marker or the, or the 3D object, which is a shame. So you can't really swap your own things in to see how it'll perform. So that's, that's a little, little bit, bit of a shame as well. Um, pricing on this one, as far as I can see, it was all contact us sort of thing. So I have no idea what they're actually charging, and I haven't co contacted them. The third AR library or commercial one that we'll talk about is uh, from Qualcomm. This one is a relatively n new library in terms of iOS. They've had a, I think they've had an Android one for a year or more. Um, only a couple of months ago did they release their iOS version. They actually make some pretty cool demos. So they, they get you from the start. So this one, we've basically got this um, rectangle of little pebbles. Um, all we can do is kind of draw a little little thing of, of dominoes around that. Oh, I might have messed that up. It's as, it's as difficult as real dominoes, because this is all dominoes is as far as I know. So and you can move around the image, you know, see it from all the perspectives. So that does what it should do. Um, and in their little interactive demo, you can kind of kick them off and see how far we get. And sort of, oh, and I knew it would break in the corner. So that sort of thing. So one more thing. I'll just draw something simple again. Um, what's good about this one is you can really... Ah, but you can really get in and, and crop in on, on the image as well. So you can get a close look. You can only see you know, parts of the image. You can get right down even to the very corner and it still knows where you are and that it, you are detecting that image. It's um, very impressive compared to some of the other ones. So that, that's quite cool. And go high angle and still almost, almost from the side you're getting detection there. So you can get some pretty cool effects with that one. So another commercial library, distributed as a static library. Um, they support iOS and Android. They also supply Unity 3 plugin for the guys that need that. Uh, they offer a C++ API, um, but you do get full control over your OpenGL ES rendering. So the in integration is more like the string app or the string library where you, you, you configure the uh, markers and everything. It controls the timing but calls into your render method to actually do the drawing and you can ask it for any detected markers and their, their matrices for the orientation and, and, that's, and so on. One other thing with these guys is that for any markers you want to detect in, in your app, you need to upload that image to a sort of a little web app on the Qualcomm site to generate the tracking data. Whereas the other guys, the other libraries, you just load the app, you, you load the image straight into the library and it does whatever magic it needs to under the hood. So I don't know if that's for performance reasons or for privacy or something, but it's um, a little bit different, not a big deal, I guess. Um, and as I showed, the partial image detection was impressive as well, which can be important. Uh, another thing that's impressive was, as far as I could tell, the licensing appears to be free for commercial use. So um, that, that was a bit of an eye-opener. I don't know if that's a short-term thing or I read it, misread it, but um, that certainly um, made me smile and I'm going to be playing with that a bit more. Um, oh, the other, the other thing that, the other demo they provided, I like, I like their demos, was this thing called multi, uh, a feature called multi-targets in one single trackable. So what, like most of the libraries, you can load in multiple targets, multiple images to detect in the scene. In this one, you can do the same thing, but you can also configure multiple targets that are in a fixed orientation with respect to each other, which is a hell of a lot easier to show than to, than to talk about. So, for example, I've got this box, looks like a um, you know, cereal box. It's got six faces, as you'd expect. Um, all six of the images are loaded in to the library, um, but they're loaded in with the respective orientation to each other. So it's expecting this face here and this on top and, and so on. So let's just take a quick look at how that works. So if I hold the box um, up to the camera, we get, uh, detects that face, it detects there's some other edges going on and it uh, renders this little bowl orbiting the box. So we can basically move right around and it keeps tracking any face that it sees, it's tracking that to make sure it's it's detecting the 3D, the 3D object rendered in a 3D virtual space or something that 
can make your mind a bit a bit crazy. So there. And it's also impressive that I've got my finger on some of the faces and it's still quite happy with that. So I think the multiple targets for this type of object really helped that for the most part until I... So I found that to be um, quite cool. I'm going to spin that around faster and so on. I thought it was cool anyway. I'm impressed easily. So that's their funky multi-target thing which I haven't seen anyone else do. What I'll do is have a quick talk about some of the open source alternatives um, before, we, before we almost wrap up. The first one I'll talk about is the core AR framework. So this one, I've only heard about it recently. I think it's fairly new in terms of being released. Um, it's, oh, just let me hold this. Oh. Like uh, most of these open source ones, they, their markers are more um, sort of coded based, so like QR code style, simpler black and white sort of pixelated or simple image um, inside them. So obviously they're, 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 I guess they're doing, you know, they have simpler um, algorithms in there but we'll just see how that one works. So we get, I'll hold it. We get the, you know, the famous teacup and we can move around to a certain extent. It does an all right job, but obviously there's a fairly lowish frame rate and update rate on that one compared to the commercial libraries and the, the edge from the side. Well, some angles aren't too bad. So you're getting a, an okay result. It may not be production quality, but obviously the source is there, so for those who want to actually see how the, how the stuff works, you dive in and have a good look. So Core AR is a framework um, on, you can get from GitHub. It's got a BSD license and they provide both C and C++ APIs for that one. Um, like I said, it's marker based, which seems to be the terminology the, for the coded style markers like QR code. The commercial libraries, they call them markerless, where there's, it's just really an image that it's detecting. Um, and I find it's you know, fairly low frame rate, at least in the current build. The next one I'll talk about is called AR, to AR Toolkit. It's a lot more well known for guys playing with AR. So we, similar sort of thing, it's got that coded style marker, it's almost like a QR code or a simplified one. Um, and we point that up to the demo and we get our bananas. And it does a good job of tracking. Obviously, you see it's quite fast. Maybe laterally it's a little bit delayed, but in terms of rotation, it does a great job. So that, that's a decent, uh, seems like a decent library. Um, like the most of these, you can't really crop, they don't like that. They want to detect the whole marker, probably because they're a lot more sort of simple, simpler markers and it looks for edge detection, but it does a reasonable job. So another open source one that has a GPL license, but they do offer um, commercial licenses um, that I think you pay for to, to, to get those. Um, like I said, it's marker-based, so the QR code style, sort of black and white simplified markers, uh, C++ API. And what I demoed was um, some guy's port of AR Toolkit, because it's basically a, you know, just a generic library, to an iOS app, to, an, to iOS and, and wrapped in a demonstration app called VR Toolkit. So you can get VR Toolkit um, off GitHub if you just want to dive straight in on the iOS side. The last library I'll talk about is OpenCV. Um, which is the Open Computer Vision Library. It is a library designed for basically use in robotics um, and any more generic sorts of computer vision apps where you want to detect, say, face detection or edge detection of real objects in the real world. And certainly augmented reality kind of fits into that space. You, it's the sort of library you might get to implement your own augmented reality solution if you wanted something different or just wanted to do it yourself. Um, Unfortunately, I couldn't find a working example of, of a, an augmented reality app for iOS that, that used that, which um, w w was a shame. Or maybe I, you know, I didn't look hard enough and I, perhaps, I didn't have time to write one myself. But that's, I couldn't do a talk about AR without mentioning OpenCV. So it's certainly worth a look if you want to get into the guts of this sort of computer vision. Um, and it's BSD licensed. Um, oh yes, one last thing I wanted to talk about was real world a real world use case I wanted to throw together for you guys um, to, to maybe a practical use for augmented reality. Um, I wanted to solve a problem that probably doesn't ex exist, but um, fancy up the next year's swipe conference, <laughs> conference building floor plan map. 
So, you know, let's say, like perhaps this year, they'll have a, floor, a map of the floor plan and they'll put that out and in each room you might have a sort of different, slightly different one you are here and the different room names and numbers. So that's, that's good in itself, but it's part of the, uh, sorry, the updated fancy swipe app that will no doubt come out. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll point that at the floor plan and we'll hopefully get a, a much more interesting way to, to browse that. So have a look at that and we get, we get the floor plan thrown up in th 3D for us, if I can get rid of that lighting. Yeah, so we get a, a 3D floor plan and we can look around that and see now which room am I in and where do I actually want to go? Um, and we can zoom right in to have a, a better look at that. <laughs> and work out what rooms we need to get to and how we're gonna how we're gonna move between them and uh, and that sort of stuff. You know, we could get obviously a lot fancier in a real app where we might have um, live session information, a lot more interesting details going on, maybe Maybe every badge would have an RFID chip and we'd track where all the people are in the centre. <laughs> Maybe all the seats would have sensors and we could say, oh, there's a spare seat in that room. Quick, let's run in and have a look. <laughs> or if you wanted to get fancy enough, you could sort of have live camera feeds um, and say, well, what's actually playing in that room? And tap on that room and see a live video <laughs> of the, the talk that's going on. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's cool. So. Anything like that's possible. And the site guys know where to find me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me summarize for you now. Um, so I uh, talked about two main categories of AR today, the location-based, which is all about positioning the device in the real world and, and just projecting objects that are near you um, in the camera, um, and image-based, which is obviously about doing real-time image processing on the camera input to detect um, predefined images in the scene and, and do a drawing on top of them or relative to those. Uh, the commercial libraries were String, Unify, and Qualcomm. All of them were really good, different positives and negatives between them, but all worth looking at. And the open source libraries, we looked at uh, Core AR, AR Toolkit, um, and OpenCV if you want to get your hands really dirty. And that's all, thank you. Many thanks to Chris for presenting this month. Thanks also to the York Butter Factory for hosting this month's event. You can learn more about this excellent co-working facility at yorkbutterfactory.com. If you would like to know more about Melbourne Cocoa Heads, visit us on the web at melbournecocoaheads.com or follow Melbourne Cocoa on Twitter.